Holy crap, we need to talk about the most batshit crazy anime of the season. You're talking about Dandadan, aren't you? What else could it be? We've got demon grandmas doing high-speed stunts, high school kids fighting creepy aliens, and the most ridiculous bathroom scene in anime history. And somehow that's just the first three episodes. I still can't believe what happened with that sumo wrestler in episode two. Right? Every time you think you know where this show is going, it throws another over-the-top curveball at you. Over the top is putting it mildly. Imagine taking four different genres, horror, comedy, romance, and action, throwing them in a blender and somehow making it work. Wait, all those genres at once? That sounds like a recipe for disaster. You'd think so, right? But somehow it totally works. So let's break this down for our listeners. At its core, Danda Dan starts with two high school students who couldn't be more different. We've got Momo, who's completely convinced ghosts are real but thinks aliens are ridiculous. And then there's Ken, who's obsessed with aliens and UFOs but completely dismisses anything supernatural. Classic setup. Two people who completely disagree. What could go wrong? Everything. Everything goes wrong. Because here's the twist. They're both right. The show basically says, hey, what if all of it was real? And that's when things get absolutely insane. Ken ends up possessed by what can only be described as, well... Go on, say it. Turbo Granny. Turbo Granny! Try explaining that to someone who hasn't seen the show! She's this demon grandmother who sets up shop in Ken's pants and becomes this twisted source of power. It sounds ridiculous, but somehow it works. And that's just the beginning. Wait until we get to the alien tentacles and the sumo wrestler. We need to talk about how this show looks because visually it's absolutely stunning. It's like they took Keep Your Hands Off Izukan and Devilman Crybaby, threw them in a blender, and somehow made something even more dynamic. Science Saru is really flexing here. Every scene is packed with energy and movement. That sumo wrestler fight in episode two, the way they blended traditional animation with CGI was seamless. Especially during those transformation sequences. The attention to detail is incredible. And we haven't even talked about the music yet. Hiroyuki Sawano, who did Attack on Titan and Kill the Kill, is composing. That explains why every scene feels so epic. Whether it's a quiet character moment or an all-out supernatural brawl, the music perfectly matches the energy. You don't see this level of detail in every anime, especially not in newer series. Let's talk about these characters, because they're what really make the show special. Momo and Ken start as complete opposites, but their dynamic is fantastic. The way they challenge each other's beliefs while dealing with increasingly bizarre situations feels so natural. And Ken's evolution from timid student to someone who can channel Turbo Granny's power is wild to watch. Speaking of impressive character growth, remember when Momo snatched that weapon from the aliens? That scene was incredible. She didn't just stand there screaming, she took action. And then there's Momo's grandmother. Talk about subverting expectations. She's this powerful spirit medium who rocks booty shorts. The grandmothers in this show are not what you'd expect. But there's such depth to her character, especially in her relationship with Momo. That apology scene actually got me emotional. It's those quiet moments that really ground all the craziness. What impresses me most is how Dandadan handles its multiple genres. Right? The horror elements are genuinely creepy. Those creepy aliens in episode one were nightmare fuel. But then they'll immediately follow it with something hilarious like that bathroom scene in episode two. We should probably let viewers experience that one firsthand. Fair enough. But it's impressive how they balance these extreme moments with real character development. And let's not forget the romance aspect. It's surprisingly sweet watching Momo and Ken's relationship develop. It's in all these little moments how they worry about each other during fights, their playful bickering, the way they slowly start to trust each other's perspectives. Even with alien abductions and demon possessions, they still manage to have these really authentic teenage moments. The show sets an incredibly high bar for itself. Do you see any potential challenges ahead? Well, balancing all these genres is like juggling chainsaws. Impressive when it works, but one slip. And the pacing is pretty intense. They're throwing so much at viewers. True, though those quieter character moments help balance things out. It's finding that sweet spot between chaos and coherence. With a second season confirmed, they'll need to maintain this delicate balance. While still raising the stakes somehow, that's not going to be easy. So we've covered the insane fights, the wild transformations, and those incredible animation sequences. But we haven't even touched on what might be coming next. That preview for upcoming episodes. No spoilers! But yes, if you think what we've discussed today is crazy, you haven't seen anything yet. Speaking of crazy, we need your help settling a debate. What's the most bonkers moment so far? Is it Turbo Granny's first appearance, the alien abduction scene, that infamous bathroom incident, or Momo's grandmother revealing her true power? Drop your answers in the comments. And while you're at it, tell us your theories. Next week, we're diving into another game-changing series, and trust me, you won't want to miss it. For all our first-time viewers, hit that subscribe button because things are about to get even wilder. And remember, in a world where both aliens and ghosts are real, anything is possible.